Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kari and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite literary fiction. So I got into reading literary fiction about mid-2021 and I've been obsessed with it ever since. Before that I had really exclusively read thrillers and non-fiction but once I discovered literary fiction it was all over. I fell in love with literary fiction so today I'm going to be telling you about my 11 most favorite literary fiction books that I think you should check out. Whether you already read literary fiction and you're just looking for some new recommendations or maybe you're new to literary fiction and you don't know where to begin, I think you should start with these ones because I really love these books and hopefully you'll love them as well. I do want to start with like a little definition of what even literary fiction is because I feel like it's really not even clear. You know, because with genres like romance or thriller or fantasy, like you really know what you're getting into, but with literary fiction, I feel like it's more vague. So let's start with a little definition. So this definition of literary fiction I got from Celadon, which is a publisher. Whereas genre fiction, from romance to dystopian horror is plot driven, literary fiction is character driven. Any action in the story impacts the main character or characters, and understanding this impact is the whole point of telling the story. The overall tone of the book is introspective. Literary fiction, then, is always a study of the human condition and often an exploration of difficult social or political issues that control our lives. Another way to recognize literary fiction is by its story structure. Unlike, say, thrillers or science fiction, literary fiction doesn't follow a formula. A story arc may or may not be present, which also means that a satisfying ending is no guarantee. The line between hero and villain is often blurry, as is what they are trying to accomplish. And without a tidy plot to spell out every character's motive, intangible details, metaphor, symbolism, or imagery, for example, play a larger role in telling the story. So all that to say literary fiction is very character driven. It's all about what the characters are facing, how they try to overcome it. Maybe they don't don't even overcome it. They mentioned that in the definition that it doesn't follow typical character arcs. Like maybe everything's not resolved by the end of the book. And maybe some people even consider some endings of literary fiction unsatisfying, but personally, I love that. However, of course, literary fiction is very broad. It includes lots of different types of stories. So even this definition can't pinpoint every single piece of literary fiction, but I just wanted to point you in the right direction of what even is literary fiction. So with that out of the way, we know what literary fiction is, let's talk about my favorite literary fiction books of all time. First, we'll start with Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. This one follows Martha, who's struggling with her mental health as well as the relationship with her husband, Patrick. It kind of goes back and forth in time, like back to her childhood when she starts to have more and more problems with her mental health, but everyone in her life really blows her off and says, oh, you're gonna be fine. It's just a part of growing up. Like, it's not a big deal. Like, get over it, basically. But the majority of the story does take place during her adulthood, but we see the effects of how her mental health was treated by the people people that she loves in her life, how what they said to her and the way that they treated her affects her today while she's still struggling with her mental health. She really finds almost everyone in her life absolutely insufferable, even the people that she shouldn't find insufferable, like she just really can't cope with the state that she's in because of her mental health. I found this one last year because it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I was really disappointed that it didn't win. I really felt like it should have won. It's really, really good. I would definitely recommend it. The writing is stunning. It's very beautiful and poetic, but at the same time, it's very witty. The wit is very smart, and I really appreciated that. Next, we have Vladimir by Julia Mae Jonas. This follows a female main character who is, I think, in her 50s or maybe early 60s, and her and her husband are both English professors at a liberal arts university. However, over the years, her husband has been accused of having relationships with some of his students, and most recently, during the timeline of the book, he's been accused again, but these accusations are really affecting her on a personal level, not just because it's her husband, because they actually have an open marriage. So the fact that he's with other people, I mean, that, that, that doesn't really concern her that much. The problem is, is that her students and her colleagues are really giving her a hard time because she refuses to leave her husband. She's choosing to stay with him and they just don't understand why. So this plot line with her husband is always kind of running in the background, but in the foreground, the main plot line is that there's a new professor at this university named Vladimir. And despite the 
the fact that Vladimir is married and has a child, the main character becomes increasingly more and more obsessed with Vladimir. And we start to see what effect does that have on her relationship with her husband, but also psychologically, what does that do to her mentally and what she thinks of herself. Again, here, this writing is very similar to Sorrow and Bliss, I would say. It's very beautiful writing and very smart humor. Don't let the cover fool you. This looks like a romance book. It's not a romance book. It is literary fiction. I would recommend the UK cover. This is what it looks like. I definitely prefer this cover. Next on my list of favorite literary fiction is Big Swiss by Jin Began. This was actually just released at the beginning of this year, but I read it right away when it came out and it immediately shot to my list of favorite literary fiction. This one follows Greta, who's a transcriber for a sex therapist. Like the sex therapist records his sessions, sends the tapes to Greta and she transcribes them. So she's not physically there in the room transcribing. And over time, she starts to become more and more almost obsessed with one of the clients of the therapist. Just based on the stories that she tells, Greta gets really, really invested in these stories. And she calls this client Big Swiss because this woman is from Switzerland. And so over time, like I said, she becomes more and more obsessed with Big Swiss. And then one day she's in the park and she overhears this woman talking and she's like, I know that voice. And she realizes that it's Big Swiss because obviously she's never seen this woman's face before, but she knows her voice by heart. So Greta kind of creates this false pretense to accidentally run into Big Swiss to introduce herself. And she doesn't tell Big Swiss that she knows who she is. She acts like she's just this random person, this random encounter. And after this random encounter, the two become very close. But there's also this kind of overhanging dread to the story because we know from the transcriptions of Big Swiss's therapist appointments that something really dark from her past is hanging over her and we kind of see how that affects the relationship between Greta and Big Swiss. I was surprised at actually how layered this story was. There's lots of elements that come together to create this story and while the writing isn't especially beautiful like it was for Vladimir or Sorrow and Bliss for example, it's very well done and especially funny. This book made me laugh out loud which doesn't happen very often so I did laugh out loud but it also made me cry my eyes out at one point. Also, I mean, how could you turn down this cover? I love this book cover. It's probably one of my favorite book covers I've ever seen. Next, we have You Deserve Nothing by Alexander Maxik. This one is written in three perspectives. One perspective is Will, who's an English teacher at an international high school in Paris. And we learn fairly quickly that Will is one of the most popular teachers at this school. Like every student wants to be in his class. If you're not in his class, you're really upset. Like you try to get into his class. All of his students students really, really respect him. And we see that they kind of go out of their way to do things to impress this teacher, to make him proud of them. And so he just has a really good influence on these kids' lives and they all really look up to him. And then the second perspective is from a male student in one of Will's classes. And we see this effect that we see this student doing things to try to make his teacher proud of him and to try to be a better person so we can actually see, yes, these students are better people because of this teacher. But then the third perspective that we have in this book is from a female student at the school. She's not in one of Will's classes, but she does go to the school. And we learned through this perspective fairly early on, this isn't a spoiler, that she's having a quote unquote relationship with Will, the teacher. So this is just a super interesting character study because we can see how on the surface, you know, Will seems like such an incredible person. Like he's such a well-respected teacher. All of the students love him. They're actively doing things in their life to be better people because of him. So you would think, wow, like what an incredible person. He's literally changing the world. But behind the scenes, we find out he's actually a horrible person because of what he's doing with this female student. So it's a really interesting character study of people are not what we think they are. There's always more to people that we don't see and that appearances can be deceiving. Next we have Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This follows an Irish girl named Ava who's in her 20s and she moves to Hong Kong to be an English teacher. Being a teacher really isn't her calling. She just moves to Hong Kong to kind of find herself. It's almost like a gap year kind of for her. But while she's in Hong Kong, she ends up meeting this British banker named Julian and he's very successful. He's very wealthy. He's very well off. Whereas Ava is living with roommates and she's just kind of living paycheck to paycheck. But Ava and Julian start to form this really close friendship and relationship question mark, you know, what are they? But Ava ends up moving in with Julian. And we start to see that Ava is looking for more emotionally from Julian, but Julian is quite distant from Ava. So it's really confusing for Ava. Like, what are we? Like, will you commit to me? Like, I live with you. You're giving me all these things, but you stay so emotionally distant from me. Like, 
what are we? But then one day Julian goes away on a work trip and so Ava's left alone and during this time she ends up meeting Edith who's a lawyer in Hong Kong. And we start to see that maybe Edith is able to give Ava the things that she was looking for in Julian that he refused to give her. So it's kind of about Ava figuring out what does she want in a relationship. This was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2021 and the writing is so witty. The humor is super dry. If you love dry humor, you will really appreciate this. It's just very smartly written. Nisha Dolan actually has a new book coming out called The Happy Couple. It's coming out on May 25th and I'm really looking forward to reading it. Ever since I finished this in 2021, I've been looking forward to something else from Nisha Dolan. So I'm really excited about picking up The Happy Couple. Next we have Clara in the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. Now I have to say that maybe people would disagree with me that this isn't literary fiction because there is a like sci-fi element to this story, but that's not the main focus of the story. The main focus of the story still is human development and what does it mean to be human and human relationships. So it's not just like only about the sci-fi element and so that's what makes it still literary fiction for me, but maybe some people would disagree with me, but I'm putting it on this list because I think that that's where it belongs. So in this book, it's normal for all young children to have what's called an artificial friend. Basically, like it's a really smart robot that every kid grows up with one of these artificial friends to kind of take care of them, to teach them certain things about growing up. And it's just considered normal for every kid to have one of these friends. So our main character is one of these artificial friends named Clara. And so the whole story follows Clara from her perspective as she's paired with this young girl named Josie and about their experience together of Josie growing up. So it follows a really long period of time, all the way from Josie being a young girl to growing up and going off to college. But it's not just about the relationship between Clara and Josie, because it's also about the relationship that they have with Josie's mom and the choices that Josie's mom has to make during the childhood of Josie and as Josie becomes a teenager and just the choices that you have to make as a parent in this world where every child has an artificial friend. Clara is one of the most pure characters I've seen in a book in such a long time. I would compare her to the likes of Bilbo Baggins. Like they're both just so pure and it feels so real and authentic. You can tell that they're both just such nice people. Well, I mean, they're not people, they're characters and Clara's a robot, but you know what I mean? It, you can tell it's just so authentic and they're both so well written that you just love them to bits because of how pure they are. And it just makes you care so much about them and so much about where they're going to end up in the story. So this book really is about what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to love someone? How far will you go for love? It's such a powerful book and let me tell you, I sobbed my eyes out at the end of this book. I read this book when it came out, so like a year and a half ago. I still think about the ending of this book and how bad it fucked me up. So anyway, even if people would disagree with me and wouldn't call this literary fiction because there is a sci-fi element to it, I think it's literary fiction and I love this book. Next on my list of favorite literary fiction, I have Animal by Lisa Tadeo. This follows a young woman named Joan and at the very beginning of the story, she's living in New York, but a man commits suicide right in front of her at a restaurant. And so obviously that has a really traumatic effect on her and she ends up moving out to California to kind of start over, to start a new life. So we see the steps that she takes to start this new life in California and the people that she encounters and where does she choose to live and trying to deal with the trauma of what's happened to her and previous relationships that she's had. But also we understand that she's looking for someone, but we don't know who and we don't know why. So there's kind of this like little mystery element to it to who is this person that she's trying to find. I do have to say that this is a very unlikable main character. So if you aren't a fan of unlikable main characters, I wouldn't recommend this one for you, but as someone who loves reading about unlikable characters, this was right up my alley. I mean, even in the blurb, it says, I am depraved. And that's definitely true. She's definitely depraved, but it's all to support this main theme of female rage. So if you like stories about female rage, this is 1000% the book for you. This is like the epitome of female rage books, but it's also about loss and dealing with trauma. So if you like unlikable main characters and you like stories about female rage, this is the book for you. Next is a book that I actually just finished and that's Stillborn by Guadalupe Natel, translated from the Spanish by Rosalind Harvey. I read this because it was long listed for the International Booker Prize this year and it has actually gone on to be shortlisted for the International Booker. So I'll be interested to see if this 
mix it because it's kind of a fan favorite. Stillborn is about two female friends. I think that they meet in university and they bond over the fact that neither one of them wants to have children. And this book takes place when they get a little bit older and one of the friends who is the main POV of the book, she has actually gotten sterilized so she physically can't have children. And the other friend has actually gotten married and with her husband they've decided that they do want to have children. So we see how these two friends' desires have kind of diverged and evolved because we see that the one friend who was sterilized, she's still happy about that decision, she still doesn't want to have children, but the other friend, she now does want to have a child with her new husband. So fairly early on in the book, this friend does end up getting pregnant with her husband. And at the same time, the main character, she becomes really close with this young boy who lives next door in the apartment next door to her with his single mom. And she forms this really close bond with him because he doesn't have the greatest relationship with his mom. And so through the story, we kind of see that there are different ways to be a mom or to be a mother figure. And that even when you are a mom and you wanted to be a mom, that you can be faced with some really difficult decisions. That probably sounds really vague, but this book really isn't that long and I don't want to spoil anything for you. So if anything sounded vaguely interesting to you, I would definitely pick this up. It's very, very good. Like I said, lots of people are rooting for this to win the International Booker this year. I would recommend it. Next is another story about motherhood and that's The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante. This is translated from the Italian by Anne Goldstein. The Lost Daughter follows this middle-aged woman named Lita and she's the mother of two adult daughters. And so this story picks up when Lita's daughters have moved out of the house and she's all alone at home now because she's not with their father anymore so she's all alone now at home and so she decides with her newfound freedom to go on vacation to the beach so every day when she's on this vacation she goes to the same spot on the beach you know she spends all day in the same spot in the sun on the beach but at the same time this other family is always on the beach at the same time as well you know they have their own spot on the beach and it's pretty close to Lita so she's just kind of observing this family every day when they come to the beach as well but she starts to become really intrigued by this mother with her young daughter and she starts to become more and more obsessed with them that she even goes back to her hotel and is thinking about, I wonder what that mother and daughter are doing right now. And so she starts to have more and more obsessive thoughts about this mother-daughter. And so it's bringing up all these thoughts that she's having about herself as a mother with her own daughters. You know, she starts to think like, was I a good mother? Did I make the right decisions for my children? Did they grow up to be good people? Was I a good mother? All of these thoughts are ignited because of this obsession that she has with this mother and daughter. And we kind of see where this train of thought takes her. This is a really short book, but there's so much packed into here. It's a really powerful story. Next on my list of favorite literary fiction is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I will warn you that this one is very heavy and it's sometimes pretty graphic, so keep that in mind. This one is set in two timelines from the perspective of Vanessa. The first timeline is in the year 2000 when she's a 15 year old girl going to school. And in this timeline, we learn that Vanessa really is in a hurry to grow up. She doesn't feel like she fits in with other girls her age and and she just feels really mature that she's ready to grow up and be an adult. And so because of this, she's really happy and like flattered when her English teacher basically starts to show an interest in her. And we start to see how her English teacher is grooming her. She feels like they have a real relationship, that they love each other and they're gonna be together forever. Obviously we know as the reader that no, no. Uh, no. But because we're in her head, we hear all of her 15-year-old justifications to herself and her 15-year-old rationale. It's so frustrating, but at the same time, such a powerful read. But like I said, be careful because it is pretty graphic and really hard to read at times. But like I said, that's the 2000 timeline, but we also have the 2017 timeline when the Me Too movement is happening. So we understand right away that Vanessa, even 17 years later, has not really distanced herself from this English teacher. Even though we start to learn more and more about the things that he's done to her, she still has kind of like a special place in her heart for him. And so when he's accused of something in the 2017 timeline, we see that he comes to her for help. So again, super powerful read, very difficult to read at times. I cried my eyes out at this book, but it was so worth it. It's such a well done book. The next book on my list is talked about a lot on booktube, so I'm sure you've already heard about this book, but I could not talk about my favorite literary fiction and not mention this book because it's one of my favorite books of all time. The hype is worth it 1000% and that's A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. 
I love this book. I know that this book is kind of divisive, that some people hate this book, like you either love this book or you hate it, and I totally respect these people's opinion, but in my opinion, this is one of the best books that have ever been written. I had to mention this book even though you've probably heard about it a million times. I love this book, it's worth the hype. If you're interested at all, I would urge you to read it after checking the content warnings if that's something that you need to do. Definitely do that. But wow, what an incredible book. It's a masterpiece, truly. The writing, stunning. Incredible writing, it's so beautifully written. Even though the content can be very difficult to read about, the writing makes it like pass so beautifully. I don't even know how to explain it, that these horrible things that she's describing are written so beautifully. I love this book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Would definitely recommend it. I won't go into too much detail because you've probably already heard about this book a million times, but like I said, I had to mention it because it's a masterpiece. All right, so those are my 11 most favorite literary fiction books that I've read up until this point. If you found this video helpful or if you enjoyed it, if you could give it a like, I would really appreciate it. It's a great way to help the channel and to push this video out to more people so that more people could see it. I would really appreciate it. I hope that you found something that sounded interesting to you. Let me know in the comments what sounded the most interesting to you if you're gonna pick up any of these books. If you've already read any of these, what did you think of them? Do you like them as much as I do? And of course, I would love it if you would subscribe if you have it already. I would love to have you back. I talk about literary fiction a lot on my channel, so I would love to have you back so that we can talk more about these types of books. And I think that that will do it. So I'll talk to you again next time. Bye!